Hi everyone. I just wanted to make a real quick video and show you guys how I make lithium ion bus bars, little tiny ones, from standard materials. And this might be useful for some people. It's helped me out and I just wanted to share it real quick. So here's what the bus bars look like. You can see it's just a really tiny bus bar. However, this is a custom made bus bar. You can put some heat shrink or something around the middle. It's really quick to make these bus bars once you figure out how to do it. And you can kind of set up a little assembly line and really pump these out. This won't work for all applications. It's only going to work for certain types of batteries and it doesn't work for everything. Here's an example of where it did work. This is a lithium ion battery bank that I'm building for a project. As you can see, it has quite a few bus bars on it. And I did not want to go out and pay for bus bars when I can make them myself. Here's one of the bus bars being installed. You can add a couple of washers and I use M5 nuts on the top. Anyway, there's all sorts of copper strip you can use to make bus bars. This is just one kind. Let me show you how I make them. Here's what I've been using to make the bus bars. This is a punch die set. I got this one at Harbor Freight, but I'm sure you can get them all over the place. You take the flat copper strip and you make a template. Here is my template. You can see I have a variety of holes punched there. And this is a gauge or a measuring gauge so that I can determine where to put the holes depending on the type of bus bar that I'm creating. As far as the thickness of the copper that can be punched, I can't make any promises. It's kind of a trial and error thing. This type of copper here has worked for me. I've been able to use it. There is a limit to how thick of a copper strip you can punch. Believe me, uh, you can't put so much copper in here and you wouldn't be able to actually punch through it. But this stuff here is relatively thin and it does punch. So to get started, I'll just take a piece of copper, cut it off. You can use uh, tin snips to do that. First thing is to make sure it's flat, and sometimes you have to use a hammer and pound that copper flat. For example, right there you can see where I cut it. It's not quite flat. That can be an issue. So you get a set of these things here. These are different sizes. These are English or Imperial measurements. I'm sure they have metric ones, but I just went ahead and got these. And here's one of the punches. It's just a piece of metal that's been shaped in a certain way. This is the end that you hit with the hammer, not the punch side. You want to make sure and hit the correct side. The flat side is the punch. And I'm going to take the copper and I'm going to line it up underneath the opening that I want to use. And now what you can do is if you have a template or you have markings, you can sort of maneuver this thing around and try to get it lined up exactly how you want it. If you don't care too much, you can just kind of eyeball it. It's usually helpful to use a marker and actually mark where on the strip you want to punch, especially if you're doing your template. This is not a template, but if you wanted to make one, you just be real careful and precise. Punch the holes, measure it, make sure it fits, and now you have a template. And you can use that template to mark all the rest of the copper strips. In this case, I'm simply going to punch it and show you what that looks like. One of the techniques that I use is to raise the punch die set up onto a piece of wood here so that the punch can go right through unimpeded. And there's your hole. It's not the best. And one of the issues with this punch die set is the alignment can be a little bit problematic. Another technique that is helpful is to support the other side of the die because this side is held up by screws and this side is not. And so it helps to hold this side up. That way when you hit it with the hammer, if you miss and hit this, it supports the plastic. This is not a durable tool and it does uh, require some care and attention, but it does work and it requires a certain level of skill. Basically, if you want to avoid drilling holes in metal, this is possibly one way to do that. There we go. Just to be clear, this tool is not the easiest to use. It is simply a way to punch holes in metal, and it may require some adjustments in order to get it to work properly. If you want to avoid drilling holes in metal, this could be the way to do it. Even though this tool is a bit difficult to use, and I know I'll be using this for some things. Certainly I made my bus bars with it and I may have some other purposes for it. Getting a good clean punch is also a bit challenging until you learn how to do it. There's a pretty good one. On the back you'll see there's a bit of blowout. And in many cases you'll need to take that on an anvil and just tap it with a hammer and that'll flatten right out and it's just fine. Uh, typically this would not that would not be a problem for a bus bar because it's copper and it'll just crush down. Let's go ahead and measure this copper just so you have a reference point. I'm going to use my gauge here. 
put it on millimeters and zero it. This is about a third of a millimeter thick. It's not the thickest stuff. It would be okay for certain types of bus bars, certain types of tasks. I did try punching two layers of this copper and it didn't go so great. The purpose of this video is to share the tool so that you guys know it exists. It might be useful for you. It is challenging to use and challenging to learn. Once I sort of got the hang of this tool, I started cranking out bus bars and I think I got some pretty nice ones. I actually was only vaguely aware of this tool, if at all. I didn't really know it existed, and I'm glad I discovered it. I'll certainly be using it. And I thought I would share the information with you guys in case it helps anyone out. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time.